Ow! Ow! Oh, oh my god! Oh, I was not expecting that. Oh wow! It's like the world's strangest coffin. Everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you are well wherever you are in the world. Welcome to our kitchen. Today we're doing another kitchen gadget testing video, part of a gigantic playlist. Uh, so if you've missed any, put on your sweatband at the end of the video, uh, check them out and you're going to need a lot of popcorn. Uh, please remember before commenting down below, some of these gadgets can help people uh, with disabilities and actually get them in the kitchen and help them, uh, which is awesome. Uh, but some of them are also novelty, as we will see today. In the background, we have some potatoes boiling away. There's nothing more exciting uh, than boiling potatoes on a Monday morning, let me tell you. So just, they're not quite ready yet. We'll move on uh, with, with a gadget, of course. Let's get going. Oh, it's worth noting that this is Kitchen Gadget Testing 68. I do do a playlist with individual ones as well. And everyone's like, oh, your next one after 68, you can do like a really funny one. Don't think so. Uh, this one by Sheffern is called The Cob. I love that, just cob. Uh, it's a corn stripper which maybe should have been in the next video. <laughs> hey, uh, safely strips whole cobs of corn. Uh, and it looks self-explanatory, nice sort of sharp blade on there. My only concern is the corn that I got, maybe it's because we're in the UK? I don't know, maybe in other parts of the world the corn is gigantic. Anyhow, you can see this hand motion here. By using the cob, uh, we can apparently easily get some corn off of our cob. So this is notoriously quite hard and apparently we're gonna twist the cob on it using the serrated end which is here uh, and it should all just fall off. Oh wow, look at that, that's good. And okay, so now we're doing what it displays on the box. That's amazing, oh wow. <laughs> that is really horrible. But now we're at the other end where if I go too far and start turning it there, I will probably cut my hand off. So we pull it through from the other side I've done a couple of corn gadgets, but I'm left with like the remains of a palm tree. I'm really impressed with that. I've got a slightly dirty hand, but that's fine. I don't know why, but it reminds me of mowing the grass and it has no, literally no similarities whatsoever. That's amazing. It shedded the corn perfectly, way quicker than I thought. My potatoes are still cooking. So how about another gadget? <laughs> Boston, are you all right, mate? <laughs> meditating. When I decide to buy uh, gadgets, which happens so much, Mrs. Barry and I is like, oh, come on, let's go shopping. Let's, let's go, you know, buy some clothes and stuff. I just found some like kitchen gadget shop. I'm gonna go buy some utensils. That tends to happen. But before I part with my cash, I always like to try and work out what the gadget is, if it's worth it. If this is just, for example, an apple corer, because it says it's a dual apple corer. Caught a variety of apple sizes with ease, and I was looking at it going, hmm, how can it do that? It's just an apple corer, and it's just like weird, like lumpy button on the, and I was like pressing it and twisting it in the shop. I just couldn't work it out. Um, but it's a dual apple corer. The cleverly designed handle accommodates both ends of the corer, right? So I'm like, well, what? Doing that in the shop, like, this intrigues me. Uh, the different sized coin blades allow a variety of apple sizes to be cored with ease. But it just says, select the coin blade suited to the size of the apple. Like, where is it? Uh, securely attach the core to the wooden handle. Where is it? Should, like, should it be there? After use, remove the handle and push the apple core out of the core. That's standard, unless you got one of these. As seen in kitchen gadget testing, I forget the number right now, that's not important. Uh, please take care when attaching and removing the core from the handle. Like, where? Where does it come out? I'm, am I focusing too much on this stump? So let's, let's core some apples. I've got a big one, of course. Yes. And a small apple. And all it says is select the coring blade suited to the size of the apple, and that is it. But as I found out in the car on the way home, because I was intrigued, you twist this, right? This is crazy. And look, you've got one end, a smaller apple corer. If we flip it, oof, that is a slightly wider apple. So we've got a little baby apple, and then maybe one for like a cooking apple, although it's not a massive difference. In fact, the apple core on this one is just huge. It's like, yep, yeah, gonna take the whole apple, you're gonna have literally just the peel left. But I've got two apples, uh, give us a little wash, and we'll give it a little test. So we take our wooden handle, <laughs> I think you can attach it to both sides, is that right? Oh no, right, okay, so there's a fatter bottom there. So if you put the fatter bottom in, Ow! Uh, oh. Ow! That's not nice. That was very bad of you. Don't do that again. That is actually quite sharp. These are some small apples. And hopefully... Oh, oh my god! <laughs> oh. Well, to be 
fair. Yeah, I mean, it's done it. It's, it's, it's called the apple. This is why I like this one, because you can release the core like that. Whereas this, I've always, it's been a little pet hate of mine, uh, particularly actually when it's serrated, that's not there. So I can push it back that way. That's the one thing I hate about apple cores is like, how do I get it out? And you push it the other way and stuff, but we can turn it the other way. That is sharp. Turn it there. So the small part goes into the small bottom. <laughs> And let's just try and do a small apple again, but with the wider cora. That one there was the bigger one. You can get probably about 2% more apple. So for that purpose, I think it's pretty good. Ah, gosh, that hurts. But some big baking apples and there is no way that should work through this. Let's try it. Yeah, I mean, it's got it, it's got the main bit, but I don't know if you can see, oh, it probably better to go this way. There is still a little bit of seeds and, and naughty bits in there that you don't necessarily want. Now, this is a bit of pressure for me now here because I find with baking apples that they don't always line up anyway. Just go down like that. I have to say, I'm not missing the serration that much. Oh, that is a horrible inside, look at that. And, um, I got most of it. <laughs> to be fair, after all of that, oh my God, look, I hate that, I hate this. Look, I, I hate that so much. I hate you. I think it's all right. We proved the concept that especially with the small apple there that you can make it work. But on the whole, I don't know. This actually might be the first one for a while that I've really been like, I don't know. I don't wanna say I hate it. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Cause I don't wanna discriminate against you, but I don't know. I hate you. All right, potatoes have just been turned off the heat. We'll let them sit in a nice warm bubble bath for a minute. Uh, next up is something, oh my gosh. This by Joseph Joseph, uh, a brand that we've uh, reviewed quite a lot here on the channel. Generally like really good ergonomical stuff, good quality, all that thing. It's a three in one tin can opener. Although one of the other things it does, I feel like is standard on most uh, can openers, but it does remind me of a gadget that I've got coming up. Uh, I'll probably do it on the next couple of uh, gadget videos or two. There's this thing called a six in one gadget. And I looked at the box last night when I was picking which ones to do today. And it quite clearly only shows you that it can do two things. It's called the six in one thing. I, I'll show you it soon, but I was like, what? So this three in one thing, uh, it is primarily uh, a tin can opener. I couldn't really see in the packaging what it does. I mean, ah, oh, it feels good. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, I was not expecting that. Oh, wow, that's cool. You can't see that in the shops, but can you see it's got the images there, a can and a bottle, but then you go back like that. Oh, I do like that now. That's actually a lot better than I thought. Hmm, but how am I gonna test it? If only I had a chopping board with a bottle of beer, a ring pull, and a standard tin of beans on it. There are a host of tin openers. My favorite one still is one where I put it on there, press the button, and it locked it. It went proper Terminator stuff, amazing. I want my beans. Oh, that was a real good lock. And this is a nice, yeah, I like this. It's a nice, good grip on it. It feels strong, it feels good quality. And yes, that has worked. I have got spaghetti rings. <laughs> it's no, I'm hiding. I have got spaghetti rings for lunch, old school. But then it's like a transformer. Oof. Probably gonna keep this, not gonna lie. So we go up like that and then literally. <sighs> that might be the best ring pull action I have ever done. The curvature on this just made it so easy. I don't remember there was a, a kitchen gadget video I did where this huge plastic blue hook thing. That might have been a wish one and it worked. Whereas that just seemed to just work so well with the curve on the tin as it just pulled it. It was like no effort, which I think for some people that struggle to open tins, that could be amazing. And then last up, we've got like the little bottle opener thing here. We just grab one of the lips. Rhubarb ginger beer. Oh, crikey. Now if only I had a temporary pop-up pint glass I could take on the go as a novelty gadget to pour this in. Uh, the pop-up pint glass. I think I did a wine one a while ago that actually spilt. So I'm hoping this doesn't happen. Good for picnics, ideal for festivals, perfect for a man shed. This is my man shed. It's quite solid. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. 
Ready to not one back at a moment's notice, just flick your wrist and the cup magically extends. Give it a little tug for good measure. <laughs> it's actually really cool though how the different bands of plastic, because obviously it is in different sections, but they bite together and almost seal them seal themselves in place to make it watertight. Oh, I do wonder, it, no, 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 oh my gosh, no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, as you drink it, can you take it down each band? But no, it wants to reduce uh, down here, first of all, which would mean it would go everywhere, and we're not doing that again. That is so good. I mean, sometimes I find that generally the novelty ones can be really cool, and that is useful. Next time I go camping with my kids, we can all have a pint now, brilliant. Folks, our potatoes are ready for the ultimate battle, which kind of sounds like one of those sci-fi films like Megalodon 6 or Shark Sheep 2. Um, it's Helix versus Kraken. <laughs> We've got two extremes of the potato mashing world here. We've got a potato ricer. Uh, again by Joseph and Joseph, this is a Helix, which I think is something to do with like a corkscrew shape or possibly your ear. But this is a potato ricer, which makes super, well, typically does make super smooth uh, mashed potato. They're really good. They tend to get ones that you sort of press down through like a metally sieve thing. Uh, and this is the polar opposite. This is a novelty uh, Kraken <laughs> potato masher. So can the Kraken mash potato as good and as smooth as a Helix? There's only one way to find out and you're watching that video. So I just Googled uh, a Kraken and um, the first thing it came up was it was a, a cryptocurrency platform, but no, we're not, <laughs> we're not buying Dogecoin today, Elon. Oh, look at this. There's no instructions. It's just one-on-one -on -one you with the most intimidating sea monster of all. I mean, look at it, it looks kind of a bit shocked. It's like, I'm gonna mash potatoes. <laughs> Remember, every five to six weeks uh, for my patrons, I do a, a giveaway a bonus content video, and there's normally uh, some of these gadgets signed. Uh, some of them I keep for myself, uh, and others I give away to charity shops, but this thing is the next step up. There's not a massive capacity for the potato, but once it's in there, that's that motion there. It is not coming out. Pushing it down with this, through this, to give you super smooth mash. Okay, here we go. Oh, listen. Oh, oh my gosh, that felt like a workout. Ugh. Wow. And that is so smooth. Oh, that is like silk in the form of potatoes. So good. It looks like maggots in a way, but super soft. Oh my gosh. There's no lumps at all. Hmm. Oh, that's good. That's good. And as an old school variant, time to crack in me mash. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's good. It's good. Oh wow. You know how it's got the little holes in the web and watch it. I mean, it does this with any masher anyway. It's gonna pop up through it. Look at that. I like to add a bit of milk to my mashed potato anyway, which makes this process a little bit simpler, but also gives it a bit more flavor, but this is not needed. The cracking is being outrageously good. And it's really not sure what's going on. <laughs> I'm not sure who's won the battle of the Helix versus the Kraken, but that is, that is super smooth. Mmm. Actually, no. There's still a few little lumps in there, but sometimes you like that. Whereas this is just perfectly smooth. I mean, I guess that's the benefit of the ricer, but then you could combine the two together, like some sort of Marvel movie. To be honest, they both work in their own way. This as a novelty item as a standard masher, but that does really help get it smooth. But the powers combined made that possibly the smoothest mashed potato that I've had in the last week. Okay, one more before our last one, which is basically like a suitcase for your microwave. Anyhow, this is the Quick Pit uh, by Chef, and it's a cherry pitter uh, gun. <laughs> Only problem is, went to the supermarket yesterday and cherries, fresh cherries, the supermarket I normally go to are out of stock. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I need something to de-pip the seed, the quick pit. You know, I need to something to test this gadget. We're gonna test this cherry pitter with olives, which I blooming love. What are you barking for? <coughs> no. Push that, boom, goes through there, and the little spike top just protrudes slightly more than the gun itself. Bit on the back there, where you can reload. It's just the end of the thing as you push it through like that, see? Uh, and the opening there, it does look like it could use all different sizes of uh, olives and cherries, to be honest, but we've just got some standard ones. 
It's amazing how your taste buds do change over the years. I used to, I mean, I, I still find them really bad, but if we go out for a meal, Mrs. B and I, and there's some like bread and olives at the start, depending on where you go, sometimes I'll just eat them out of boredom and be like, I can manage them, you know? Line up the butt of the olive. Oh, that's, yeah, once you've got like that, that's pinching it, and hopefully, What the hell just happened? Oh, wow. Okay, we have um, made a hole in our olive. <laughs> that shot out like, that was crazy. I'm gonna try to get softer. <laughs> There's no denying, once you pull that trigger, it feels like it wants to break and then boom, just shoots it across your floor. So you kind of need like a big spit screen up to stop it going everywhere. So I struggled to get cherries uh, with pits in, the frozen ones didn't have anyway. We found these that do work. So I thought, well, let's try it a little bit differently. These are some ones that are stuffed with anchovies. Yep. That's an anchovy, that's, yeah. That's salty. Oh. <laughs> and out comes your anchovy. Oh. Oh my gosh. Oh, crikey. Oh, oh that's, that's, why would anyone want that? It just tastes like, this, like I mean, I'm sure this, uh, the world of food is all about opinions, but that literally tastes like a lump of the sea. The saltiest thing I've ever tasted. Oh my gosh. Right, our final one today is a microwave suitcase thing. <laughs> this last one, uh, is by Leku. We've had a few of these and I've got another one or two uh, in my garage. Uh, Estesh du Vapeur microwave cooker. It is basically a silicon suitcase to cook uh, microwave food in, okay? Um, it, look how flimsy it is. It feels like more like a kid's toy, but this has some epic recipes that you can make, including a horrendous one that I thought we have to pull this out. This sounds so weird, so intriguing. I want to do it, but effectively you can cook food in it. Uh, you can put a whole fish in it. I'm not going to do that because Mrs. Barry will kill me, um, but you can steam things as well. The moisture can help cook the food as well, or you can just sweat it like mushrooms, which in fact we might do, but that's it. It's just a suitcase like that that holds it together and it's really sturdy. Let's see if it works. The one thing I like about this product, um, the packaging they always do is, it's always quite quirky. Like you can actually, if you wanted to, if, if you really like this product that much, you can have the cooking times for all the things and just have them popped up right in the back of your kit, like permanently like that. But it does have uh, some recipes as well. There's um, some sauteed mushrooms with onions and uh, some parsley and some garlic. That sounds lovely. But then there was this thing here, carrots with tangerine juice and cardamom, which sounded, you see that there? Sounded horrendous. And when something sounds horrendous as I go and wash this, it makes you want to try it. So this is the recipe we're following. It's basically just carrots, cardamom, uh, which I tend to have like when I've made rice before, really fragrant that, it's quite strong, uh, and some tangerine juice, but I've got orange juice, which is fine there. These are some carrots we've actually grown in our garden that I just peeled off camera. Um, and they, <laughs> they're a little bit dirty, so I give them a wash. Now just so I add this in there, because we apparently add the orange juice first, okay? Nice. And then the cardamom pods, still in their pods, not just the seeds. I have no idea why. Now, just as I close this up, we saw uh, Mrs. Barry's grandma yesterday, and she's quite old school and set in her ways. And she, and, and in the nicest sounds of it, she's always set in her ways, but I was sort of saying how those carrots there from the ground are obviously quite dirty. She refuses to eat potatoes that she's bought in the shops unless there's mud on it. I didn't really elaborate and question her any more on that, but if you've heard of that as well before, that's fine, let me know, because I thought I was like, I mean, you take the mud off, right? Oh yeah, so take the mud off, but there must be mud on it to prove that it's a potato or something. I don't know, it's like a... In the microwave for one minute, first of all. Ooh, so that's had a minute and it's just bearable to handle. That's possibly the weirdest thing I've ever smelled. <laughs> oh my gosh. So now we take our carrots and these are just fitting in... <laughs> in the basket. I've just got to show you this, look at that. It's like the world's strangest coffin. And it gets four minutes in there, which I'm happy with. That's a nice long time to microwave something, which means it's going to be really hot. But let's just see how that turns out. And it's probably quite a good bit of kit. Oh my gosh. I don't know if the microphone's going to pick that up, but my microwave sounded like a jumbo jet. 
Ah, oh, look at all the moisture up <laughs> where I've opened it. Ah, oh, that is really angry in there. But we need to look at the positives of that anger and what it's hopefully done to our carrots. Wow. But yeah, that's what we were aiming for. And um, I've got to admit, we're fairly close to that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that carrot is super tender. Mmm. I got a little lick of the orange juice at first, and then it was just kind of like a soft, mushy, almost pumpkin flesh kind of tasting butternut squash vibe, you know, going on with the carrot. It's up there with one of the strangest carrot dishes I've ever had. <laughs> the smell of the cardamom, the little bit of orange on there, and a mushy carrot. Delicious. To be fair, as barbaric as it was, that is actually pretty darn good. I mean, it has ultimately worked. Not my favorite gadget today. I think that was the cherry pitter or that three in one can opener, which was so much fun. Or even the pop up pint glass. So simple. It works an absolute charm. Don't forget to check out the rest of the kitchen gadget videos if you haven't seen them already, or some of you already have and enjoy watching them again. Hours of content there put on your sweatband. You're going to need a lot of popcorn to get through that. Any gadgets you've seen, do let me know on your favorite social media platform of choice. And don't forget to subscribe for regular videos and food fun. Make sure your notifications are turned on as well because they don't tell you when I upload a video sometimes, which is really nice. Uh, other than that, have a good one and I'll see you soon. Bye. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. All right, bonus scene. Apparently, mushrooms and corn. I completely forgot the cob gadget then when I said which one was my favorite. That was right at the beginning. That was a great one. Corn and mushrooms need no moisture added and two minutes. Two minutes. Oh, nice. Still hot, but not too hot when it's only been two minutes. Now asparagus and peppers, they need a teaspoon of water for some moisture, okay? To steam it, I suppose. Four minutes. Oh yeah. That's, that's cooked through. Now, we're gonna make an omelette. Surprisingly, no spaghetti hoops, no mashed potato, no olives, and no cardamom carrots. Sorry. But we will add in some sweet corn and the mushrooms. I just had a little mushroom off camera, and that is nice. And this is some beaten egg. Got three beaten eggs with a little bit of milk that I've seasoned. Pray for Barry. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that! It looks like an egg purse. Mushrooms, peppers, sweet corn, asparagus. Oh, it's definitely cooked through, it's, it's very hot. <laughs> it blooming well worked. <laughs> See ya.